The Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions will please come to order. This morning we're holding a hearing on oversight of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission examining EEOC's enforcement and litigation program. Senator Murray and I will each have an opening statement. We'll introduce our panel. After our witness testimony, senators will have five minutes of questions. And I will say to Senator Murray, I hope she'll indulge me. My statement is a little long. I'm going to abbreviate it and ask to put the whole statement in the record. And I'll try to keep, I'll, I'll try not to abuse the privilege of the chair by taking too long. Uh, exactly uh, six months ago, I sat in the ranking member's chair and I voted against Mr. Lopez's nomination as the EEOC general counsel. I said then that I believed he'd placed too much emphasis on litigating high profile lawsuits at a time when there were more than 70,000 complaints of workplace discrimination that had not been investigated. Since then, the lawsuits have continued, the agency has suffered embarrassing rebukes from the courts, and the backlog has grown. We're here today to find out why such an important agency with such a critical task has gotten so far afield of its mission. I know our country's history. I stood on the Mall in 1963 when Martin Luther King delivered his I Had a Dream speech. My friend uh, George Haley died last week. He was admitted to the uh, University of Arkansas Law School in the 1950s and had to sit in a room by himself because he was an African-American. I've tried in my public and private life to support equal rights, but what's going on in the EEOC, in my view, is not consistent with the noble actions that I just described. My four chief concerns, and I'll hit them briefly, one, the Commission is pursuing investigations that may not involve a complaint, while the backlog of complaints has grown to 75,000. Two, the Commission is losing lawsuits and receiving embarrassing rebukes from the courts, wasting taxpayer dollars. Three, instead of following law, the EEOC is focused on, quote, developing the law, creating regulatory guidance without any notice or comment, Fourth, there's not much about the Affordable Care Act that this committee and the president agree on, but one thing was employee wellness programs, and the EEOC created a conflict um, with the committee, with the president, with three departments of the Obama administration and their regulations, and now has offered a, a rule to try to solve the problem that exceeds the EEOC's authority, in my judgment, and doesn't solve the problem at all. First, investigations right out of a complaint. In my view, the EEOC is spending too much time initiating lawsuits from investigations which were begun without an individual filing a complaint and with a clear intention by the agency to achieve a maximum amount of pub publicity. For example, investigating at least three accounting firms, at none of which there was a complaint, rather where partners have voluntarily adopted a mandatory retirement age or the Texas Roadhouse restaurant chain, um, where you're investigating age discrimination because the hosts, bartenders, and servers seem too young. There were apparently no complaints when it started. To make sure you have complaints, the agency is actually advertising on Craigslist to churn up more complaints. At the same time, the number of backlog, a number of complaints that people actually aggrieved have filed with your agency has increased to 75,658. Court rebukes. Uh, last six months ago at our hearing, I read some embarrassing words from a unanimous three-judge panel of the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which said of an EEOC case, ECOC brought this case on the basis of a homemade methodology crafted by a witness with no particular expertise to craft it, administered by persons with no particular expert to administer it, tested by no one and accepted only by the witness himself. The commission continued to appeal another case using the same faulty witness and lost that case too causing a unanimous three-judge panel of the Fourth Circuit to say there were an alarming number of errors. In a concurring opinion, one of the judges said the commission's conduct in the case suggested an exercise uh, of vigilance has been lacking. Since 2011, the EEOC has been ordered to pay attorney's fees in 11 different cases, the most recent one being in Washington State, where a judge in a federal district court ruled that 
the EEOC had demanded more than $25 million from two defendants, and the court found it had no valid basis for doing so. This is what the court said. The EEOC failed to conduct an adequate investigation, pursued a frivolous theory of joint employer liability, sought frivolous remedies, and disregarded the need to have a factual basis to assert a plausible basis for relief under Title VII. There are other examples. Respect for the rule of law. On top of this, I'm concerned the commission and Mr. Lopez seem to be inventing ways to avoid following the law, taking a, quote, entrepreneurial approach, talking about novel issues. Then there's the matter of guidance. In the past uh, two and a half years, twice, the commission has set national workplace discrimination policy through guidance and then filed lawsuits based on the guidance as if they, the commission, could make the law. And finally, the employee wellness proposed rule. This committee, Congress and the President, specifically authorized employers to reward employees for making healthy lifestyle choices. Three departments of the Obama administration's issued regulations consistent with the law. Yet in 2014, EEOC decided to sue employers for following the law and following those regulations and offering those plans. Even the White House press secretary expressed some concern about this. Our committee expressed concern about this. In April, EEOC offered a proposed rule on employee wellness, but the rule ignores the law and the administration's regulations. We can talk more about that. So this is not the first time these issues have come up. I issued a report last fall detailing many of these problems. We held a bipartisan hearing earlier this year. The White House press secretary, as I said, has expressed some concern, but no one seems to be listening. Here we are still about to discuss the fact that the EEOC is still spending its time looking for investigations when there are no complaints, while a backlog of complaints grows to 75,000, still receiving embarrassing rebukes from the court, still experimenting with developing the law and guidance free of public comment, and still ignoring the intentions of Congress and the President in writing into federal law system for encouraging businesses to offer employee wellness programs. All of these issues are of concern to me, and I look forward to hearing from the General Counsel and Chair regarding how they're addressing them. Senator Murray.